All right, biology students, we are in unit four, which is our genetics unit, and we are kicking off genetics with a lesson over DNA and RNA, which is not something that you are unfamiliar with. We have been talking about DNA and RNA as nucleic acids since the beginning of the school year. So today we're just going to dive deeper into what those um, biomolecules are, what their structure looks like, and then how they function. So just a reminder from unit one when we talked about macromolecules, DNA and RNA are both what we call nucleic acids. So when we talked about the four macromolecules, just a reminder, we have carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and then we also have nucleic acids. And when we discussed that back in unit one, we went in a little um, more in depth with proteins and lipids and carbohydrates. And I told you that we would come back and spend an entire unit talking about nucleic acids. Um, and so here we are. So both DNA and RNA are made of what we call nucleotides. And if you'll look at your screen, a nucleotide contains three parts. So every nucleotide contains a phosphate, a sugar, and then what we call a nitrogenous base. And then we have some options for those nitrogenous bases. So we can have adenine, we can have thymine, but now we're only going to find thymine in DNA. We can also have guanine, we can have cytosine, and then we can also have uracil, but we're only going to find uracil in RNA. I want you to think about DNA as sort of like a recipe. So if I want to make chocolate chip cookies, I'm, I'm going to want to follow a recipe. And that recipe is going to tell me exactly what I need to do in order to produce cookies. I might, it might say uh, add a cup of sugar, add three eggs, add a half a cup of flour, some chocolate chips, and then I make cookies. DNA is very similar. It provides a recipe, but instead of making chocolate chip cookies, it provides the recipe for making proteins. So it tells the rest of the cell how the process is done. All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through, we're going to talk about DNA, and then we're going to talk about RNA, and I want you to make sure that you get this information in your notes. So pause the video if you need to, um, to ensure that you copy down all of this information. So the first thing we need to talk about is what does DNA stand for? So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. You might want to practice saying that a few times. So deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, the structure of DNA, if you look at your screen, this is like the infamous picture of a DNA molecule, um, a two-dimensional version. DNA is what we call a double helix shape because it looks like a ladder that's been twisted over itself. So what we're going to notice with DNA is it's double-stranded, so it has two sides. Um, with DNA, we see that uh, we have the sugar deoxyribose. So that's where DNA gets its name from. It's named after its sugar. So deoxyribonucleic acid um, is going to contain the sugar deoxyribose. There are also four options for nitrogenous bases in a strand of DNA. So we're going to see adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Now, DNA is going to be found in the nucleus of eukaryotes. So remember, um, DNA and RNA are found in all living organisms, but in eukaryotes, which have a nucleus, we're going to find the DNA in that nucleus. Now, RNA is going to help DNA make proteins. So they're both essential for living organisms. Living organisms are going to contain both. And we're going to learn in a future lesson that there are three types of RNA. So when we get to protein synthesis, we're going to dig a little deeper into this. Um, but we have mRNA, which stands for messenger RNA, rRNA, which is our ribosomal RNA, and then tRNA, which is our transfer RNA. And each has its own job. But RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, and just like DNA, it's named after the sugar that it contains, and so this is where RNA and DNA differ. So DNA contains the sugar deoxyribose, RNA contains the sugar ribose. Now, they also differ by the number of strands that they have. So DNA, you noticed, had two strands. Uh, RNA is single-stranded, so it just is made up of one strand. Now, there are four options for nitrogenous bases, just like with DNA. 
and we're going to find three of those nitrogenous bases are similar to DNA molecules. So we're going to see adenine again in RNA. We have cytosine, which we also saw in DNA. And then we have guanine, which is also part of DNA. Um, what's going to differ, though, is we do not have thymine in an RNA molecule. So thymine, you'll notice here, is going to be replaced with uracil. And we can use abbreviations because you're not going to want to write out these words, adenine, uracil, cytosine, guanine. So you can use letters. You can see in the image on your screen, we've used letters to represent these words. And as we get into um, complementary strands and protein synthesis, uh, you'll be able to use letters. Now, RNA can actually leave the nucleus. So we are going to find RNA in the nucleus of the cell, but because it can leave, we can find it also in the cytoplasm. If you look at your screen here, we just have some different structures. I want you to be familiar with what the structure of a DNA molecule looks like. Um, so here you'll notice that we have three nucleotides, and these nucleotides link together to form chains. Um, humans actually contain three billion nucleotides in a single cell. Um, so here you have what's called the backbone of the DNA molecule, and the backbone is going to be comprised of a sugar and a phosphate. And then we have in the center the nitrogenous bases, and they're going to pair up, and they're going to pair up in a very specific way. So we call these base pairing rules, and this is something that you'll need to memorize because you're going to have to use it for the rest of the unit. We'll also get into some of this when we get into evolution, so this is definitely something you want to pay attention to. So our base pairing rules, A always pairs with T. So adenine and thymine are going to pair together, and C will always pair with G. So cytosine will pair with guanine. Um, there's all kinds of different ways that you can remember this, but this is how I remembered it in high school. Um, apples are found on a tree, so A pairs with T, and cars are found in garages, so C pairs with G. If you have another way to, to remember that, um, then that might be helpful, but that's just how I remembered it when I was in high school. Um, now, remember, we're not going to have thymine in RNA, so A won't pair with T in RNA. A will pair with U. Now, these um, nitrogenous bases are held together by hydrogen bonds, which are weak. We're going to talk about this when we get into DNA replication, which is our next lesson. Um, but I just wanted to make note of that so you have heard it before we get to our um, replication lesson. Um, the way that I might ask you a question on a worksheet or a quiz or a test is I might provide you with a DNA molecule, and I might give you one strand of the DNA molecules nitrogenous bases, and I might ask you for the complementary strand. And what you're going to do there is you're going to use base pairing rules to figure out what the complementary strand will be. So we said earlier that adenine always pairs with thymine, so if I'm trying to guess what's on the opposite side, um, I'm going to put the letter T. Now remember, cytosine always pairs with guanine, thymine always pairs with adenine, Cytosine always pairs with guanine, and again, you can use letters to represent um, these nitrogenous bases. So I want you to take the time to pause the video and see if you can guess the remainder of the missing bases. And then you can check your answers and see if you got it right. Right, here's just some other views. I like to provide you with multiple um, images of a DNA molecule so that you can, you know, see the different formats. You can see the nucleotides are going to link together to form the strand of DNA. This is what we call the backbone, the sugar and the phosphate. Um, and it looks a lot like a ladder where the rungs of the ladder would be the nitrogenous bases. And you'll notice that these bases are paired using base pairing rules. Uh, also notice you don't see any U's. This is because this is a strand of DNA, so we're going to have thymine. And then um, we get sort of a twisted, the ladder looks like it's twisted over itself to form the double helix shape. And double helix is just sort of an adjective we use for a molecule of DNA. 
All right, I want us to kind of break down what we talked about in this lesson um, and go through just the most important uh, concepts that you need to know with regards to DNA and RNA. So there are some similarities between DNA and RNA. Um, they're both found in all living organisms. They are both considered nucleic acids, which are one of the four biomolecules or macromolecules. But there are also some differences. So let's make sure that you know that DNA has two strands, whereas RNA is single-stranded, so there's only one strand. DNA is made up of the sugar deoxyribose. This is where it gets its name. And then RNA is going to be made of the sugar ribose. Both have four nitrogenous bases, but one of the bases are going to differ depending on whether you're uh, looking at DNA or RNA. So for DNA, we're going to have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And then for RNA, we're going to have adenine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine. And the base pairing rules are going to differ a little bit depending on whether we have DNA or RNA. So the base pairing rule for DNA, ape is always going to pair with T. Remember, apple in a tree. And then car in a garage. So C is always going to pair with G. Now, because we don't have the thymine in RNA, we're going to replace that T with U. So A will pair with U in an RNA molecule, and C will pair with G. Now, if you are following along with my class notes and you are in my class, there is a little part on your notes that talks about the discovery of DNA structure. And we're going to watch this little video clip in class. So if you are watching from home, um, I've put the link on the screen in case you're interested in taking a look at this on your own. And that's the end of today's lesson. I will see you in the next lesson where we are going to learn about DNA replication.